Hi, my name's Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Trish and I'm not. And welcome back to another episode of... Are you dying to know? It's Trish is dying to know. I am. Hello. 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 Oh, Hello together there. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I had an encounter. Did you? In my house. When? I don't know if I told you or not. I'm not sure you have. So, mm -mm. maybe I'll save it to the end of the video. Okay. Okay, cool. anyway, let's Simply answer a question first. Let's get some serious stuff out of the way and then all those people who are too serious to hear us juggling on about crap Yeah, we'll talk can go. Yeah, we'll and talk at the And you guys who want to hear it can stay. <laughs> yes. Okay, cool. Um, all right, I've got a question in your, um, in your question machine. It's your question machine, it's that it, one. It's off. It's gone off. Hang on, this is my question machine. Okay, <laughs> but I need glasses. I'm sorry to the man. I'm sorry, I can't remember who you were. But you told me that, thank God, I didn't have to wear glasses in a video because it's so nice to see me without glasses. I'm really sorry. But I just can't see without them. So. Yeah, we're a bit lame. <sighs> it just comes with being old. Sharon. Hello, Sharon. How are you? Yeah. I hope Sharon's well. I hope she is. Yes, mm. I hope you are. Uh, uh, sorry, I hope Sharon's well. I hope they are. Yeah, I hope they are. Mm. Um, <laughs> we're still getting used to the, the modern world. The modern Bear with world, us. yes. <laughs> Um, okay, Sharon writes, hi lovely ladies, love your vids, question time, am I able to take part of my father's cremated remains from Sydney to England to be spread where he was born? He passed in 2027, 2007, sorry, he passed in 2007, is it a difficult process, who should I speak with please, thank you. Now, I answered this question, Did you? I answered it incorrectly, because... Uh from my knowledge, that was a pure old, yeah, sure, just take him in your baggage and that'll be fine because that's what my family did a few years ago with somebody. But apparently that's not the case. So we thought we'd better do a video and set the record straight, Sharon. So I hope you're listening. Uh, Tracy's going to tell us what you actually have to do because she actually knows. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's the danger of going on holidays and passing your jobs on to me. Yeah. See? You get some amateur answer, yeah, you can do that. Sure, go for it. Yeah, yeah, good luck at customs. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. Tracy, what do you do? Yeah, yeah, you can take your ashes, uh, dad's a part of dad's ashes, um, to the UK. The the thing that you need to do though is the, the ashes have to be in a sealed container, completely sealed, and normally in the ashes container that it came from the crematorium in. If it's been a few years, they mightn't have that. So they can they maybe take that. it back yeah. to a funeral director and say, can you seal this for me? Yeah, they can. Or if it's already sealed in an um, urn, because urns sometimes are sealed and, you know, are they? Tight. yeah, they glue them. Oh, really? Yeah, hmm. some of them. Okay. But it has to be in a sealed container and you need certificates for uh, that. So, and it's, it's, it's simple. You don't need anything major. You don't have to go and get legal documents or anything like that it's just you just need your uh the certificate of death for dad's death um a copy of it doesn't have to be the original but it would have to be um signed by a jp so your uh death certificate copy of copy of the cremation uh, certificate so when you get cremated remains you'll get a certificate to say it was cremated on this date by this company you know and all the details is on there so as long as you've got them two pieces of paper the uh, urn is sealed you can take it on carry on luggage but you just need to um, declare it and have them on because if you don't declare it they'll take you through into customs but yeah it's 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 very simple there's nothing uh, like too complicated about and it and if but... you don't have those documents you just go back to the people yeah. that did it yeah, and yeah. get those documents yeah, i'll yeah. be able to give you another copy yeah you'll have the, your um, dad's death certificate and you just need to get a, a copy uh, certified copy and um you can go back to the crematorium where dad was cremated and they'll issue you a new uh certificate if you've lost it or anything like that or you don't have it or you can't remember getting it or anything like that so you would just phone up your uh local uh cremate crematorium that uh, looked after dad and they'd be happy to issue you a, a new one so yeah it's simple and easy really it is but yeah but you've just just in case, you know, I don't want you to be smuggling them into your case. And, and the reason and why thinking. it's a problem is? Uh, yeah, many years ago, I think people or somebody was caught trying to smuggle drugs uh, through in an urn. 
Um, so the laws kind of changed to uh, make it more secure with the sealed ashes and, you know, the proper certificates that you need and all that, you know. Got so, to do it right. Yeah. Sorry about the bum steer I gave you. Yeah. I'm really sorry about yeah. that. Yeah, so, yeah, just just do that. Simple and easy, you know. Um, I don't know. Maybe Many people maybe have put them in the luggage and they've gone through, you know, but uh, just to make it easy and safe, it's, you know, so you're not going to get pulled up at customs on the other end or that end or whatever. So, yeah. Just two certificates, sealed container, and dad should be fine. Good luck with that, lovely. You can go Hope it goes smoothly. Yeah. Go take, take him back him, home. Take him back to a good old UK. Good old blighty. <laughs> the motherland, I say. The motherland. <laughs> she uh, loves it so much. Why don't you just go back? <laughs> it's too cold. Well, there you go. You're too cold here. How would you survive there? Yeah. <laughs> I, know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I know. You it's love it here. Yeah, I, but I can back. understand that. It's in your bones. Yeah. It's home. It's my home country, born and bred in the UK. And it's a beautiful place and it mm. is lovely. And I do miss, uh, do miss it in some places. And I watched a program the other night, a few programs with, um, oh, just forgot his <laughs> name for a minute there. David Attenborough. No. No. Not David Attenborough. Who? It was. Stephen Fry. No. God, I just forgot his name. I was watching all the episodes. Vicar oh. of Dibley. Uh, he's a fisherman. Uncle Ted. He's a Geordie fisherman. I don't know. He's an actor and he's a singer and he was in Soldier Soldier. What do you call it? Oh, Robson Green. Never That's bloody right. heard of him. Robson Green was, the, yeah, he was very famous. He's very Stop famous. making noises with your hands. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Robson and, Green. And it was in a uh, concert, which is where I was born. <laughs> a place called Concert. Yeah. Oh, I thought he was in a concert. No, he was in you Concert. You said he was a singer. Well, he was. <laughs> I'm really confused. Concert's a place in the UK. Right, okay. I, 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 I was born in, in okay. Concert. Cool. Uh, the hospital doesn't exist. That's how old I am. I was born in Richard Murray Hospital and it's not there anymore. But, uh, yeah, so he was in Concert, which is not far from where I'm from, Stanley, and uh, I was like, oh, my God, I have to watch this, I have to watch this. And it was like, I was cool. He was in the uh, rainforest. Oh, nice. It's called the forest thing. We don't have rainforest. No, it's it's just, just the, the forest. Bush, just the forest. It's really Aww. nice. It's a nice part of the world, and he was in the Derwent Water and Derwent Reservoir, and it was very beautiful. I went, oh, that's my hometown. That's where I was born. Nice. And it was nice. So, yeah, if you've seen it, guys, if you haven't seen it, I should say watch it from the UK. You all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Nobody else is interested. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> My ghost story. Oh, yes. So, as you all know, if you're following along at home, if we've, still here. we've bought ghost hunting equipment, right? Yeah, so we I'm don't just, know anything about ghost hunting, but I'm we thought just, it would be a fun little side shoot of what we're doing, and we're both a little bit intrigued by these things. Yes. So, a bit nervous about it too. <laughs> I'm rubbing my hands again on it. Oh, I'm in so much trouble. Yep, Sorry. Um, the noises you must be hearing in these microphones. Trace doesn't have to edit these videos. Just keep your hands to yourself, love. Anyway, so we bought ghost hunting equipment and we've got a few bits and bobs. So we've got an EMF reader and we've got a spirit box and we've got um, a point and shoot thermometer so you can tell what the temperature is over there and over there and over there. Oh, we like but James Bond. The funnest part of it all is we've got cat balls. Not cat balls. We've got toys that light up with a bell that you sit somewhere and when somebody, an entity, wants to, they go and the thing goes do, 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 well. and the light lights up. So that's the freakiest part and they're very much <laughs> locked away in about three bags so they can't be escaping and rolling down my hallway. Right, so I've had a conversation with a couple of my massage clients and I was chatting to a few people this particular day and um, I was saying, telling the story about how we bought the equipment and how, and they were saying, where are you going to do it? And we said, oh, well, we thought about doing it at the mortuary, but we think that's quite disrespectful, so we're not going to do that. Then we thought about doing it at the office at mm. your work because there's some activity there, but yeah. then we thought, oh, that's not very exciting. Then we got the offer from someone else to do it at their house because they think they have a presence and they'd be really keen for us to have a look and, and have a go. And um, so that's what we are going to do. And we are in the process of organising that and that's great. And the person said, why don't you do it at your house? You've said you've got someone at your place. And I said to them, I don't want to know. I don't yeah. want to talk to them, especially if I ever have to be there by myself with my dog. I don't know what's going on there. We just coexist. We know that they're there. They know we're there and everybody's happy at the moment. 
And that was all well and cool and the days passed. And about three days later, I had to get up in the middle of the night because I have a geriatric cat who's 20 and gets fed about six times a night. And I had to get up to feed Garfield. 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 God rest his soul when it finally shuffles off. (laughs) He's a tiny little skinny thing. There's nothing of him. Anyway, so I got up in the middle of the night to feed Garfield and I'm at the sink rinsing out the cat tin and I get this booming voice in my head, not in the world, just in my head that says, why don't you want to talk to me? And I knew exactly what it was about and I knew exactly what I'd said and I knew exactly what it had to do with. And you know what I did? What? Piss bolted back to bed, shat myself, hopped into bed, pulled the covers up and went to sleep and oh. pretended it didn't happen. My God, really? Yep. And it was like that. It was angry. It's the first time I've ever felt that it was a threatening thing. Like it plays with my computer or he, she, whoever, plays with my computer when I'm working sometimes and there's things that happen. I've had them sit on the bed. So you feel this. <coughs> and like I'm in bed with my husband and I just roll over the other way and cuddle up to Neil and pretend it doesn't happen. Um, oh, my God. But that's the extent of it. And we've yeah. heard like footsteps and stuff like that. Nothing particularly scary, but this noise, this voice in my head. It's not Carl, is it? No, it wasn't Carl. Carl's, Carl's not a malicious yeah. being. No, and I don't think this person is either. Yeah. I think they were just offended that I didn't want to talk to them. So Neil and oh. I have a chat and we've decided that when, when, you know, we know that there's going to be a good patch time when he's not going anywhere. For a while. <laughs> For a while. Otherwise, I'll, you'll get a phone call in the yep. middle of the night. You come so to mate. <laughs> we're going to have a chat with old mate and we right. will talk, but um, wait and pick our time to do so. Okay. That's a good story. Wow. Mm. So in the meantime, goosebumps. we're going to go and do it at someone else's house. Mm, looking forward to that. Yeah, but of course and we're scary. totally amateur. Oh. We don't know what we're doing, so I have to watch a few videos. So if anyone's yeah. got any tips, yeah. send them in. We'd like yeah. to know. Do that. Yeah, that's cool. Mm. We'll watch the space and for that, yeah. I'm intrigued myself. <laughs> All right. So on that note, till next yeah. time. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.